for the, the third and, and, and last part of this, uh, this session. Um, we've heard about so many interesting public engagement project, projects, but how do we measure their impact? Um, how do we keep the relationships warm? How does public engagement relate to recognition and rewards? We already talked about it. Um, we'll talk about this with the two uh, guests. Um, Iris Muis, she's uh, the project manager of the Utrecht Data School. Uh, that forms a bridge between education, science, and corporate environment regarding data and data ethics, and Madeleine Strick. Uh, she developed a tool to measure the impact of public engagement events. We're going to talk about that as well. Um, uh, let's start with you, uh, uh, Iris. Uh, somebody left? All right. Oh, yeah, this, yeah. Oh, it's for you. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not sure if if, uh, if everyone is familiar with the Utrecht Data School, so maybe you can tell us something about the Utrecht Data School, what the goal okay, is, sure. wh what you do. Sure. Um, so uh, Utrecht Data School is a research and teaching platform within the humanities. We just moved from uh, media and culture to Center of Digital Humanities uh, two weeks ago. So uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's very good news for us because um, it allows us to really work in between the different faculties. Um, and our research interest is focused on the impact of datafication and technology on society. So what happens when processes are increasingly datafied? Uh, Data-driven policy uh, is perhaps a concept um, that you've heard more often in the last couple of years. Um, so uh, we engage in research really in the field, so we do a lot of research within public management, with municipalities for instance, uh, and also other organizations. So really for us, um, public engagement or cooperation with external partners happens every day uh, within every project we, we do. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us uh, something about some of those projects. Uh, we have one here fundamental rights and algorithms impact assessment. Yeah, something I'm Freya. very proud of. Um, so uh, what we do basically is we um, enter into the field. Uh, so we speak to a lot of people from municipalities, from different ministries, and we ask them, you know, what are your challenges regarding datafication? Uh, what are the, uh, the themes you grapple with? So we listen to those challenges and then we go ahead and um, develop instruments. Uh, so this is one of them, the Freya uh, or IAMA in Dutch. Uh, we also developed the DIDA or Data Ethics Decision Aid, which has been around for five plus years. Do we have a, a slide of that one as well? Maybe I the next one? So Maybe yeah, here yes. it is. Yes, here we go. Uh, so in, a, in essence, these are um, methods surrounding data ethics which organizations can use to further them into their data ethical aspirations. Uh, but for us, it's also a way of collecting data. Uh, so we go ahead, enter into these organizations as workshop moderators, as experts. Uh, we guide these sessions. Um, and a parallel process for us is collecting field notes, you know, what are their capacities when it comes to technologies? What are the um, organizational boundaries, limits uh, they face when dealing with datafication? So this gives us input for on our own research. Uh, so that really shows like the yeah, mutual benefits, uh, I suppose, for both parties when we work with uh, external partners. Mm -hmm. So you, you work with municipalities, maybe the next slide um is yeah there's lots of things that you do maybe the one after no maybe you can tell us something about this one yeah so we um in essence we have two main uh, target complex. groups <laughs> it's a very complicated uh i i guess uh lisana you will not be very happy with this diagram <laughs> <laughs> um, you can talk afterwards <laughs> yeah um so basically, we uh, have uh, a couple of different audiences we try to engage with. The first is uh, people that work in government, so civil servants that do something with innovation and technology, but also council members, politicians that deal with uh, datafication, but also the media. Uh, but this was for us a, a little bit of a 
different project because it was with the uh, Netherlands Institute for Human Rights. Uh, and they came to us and they said, you know, we, we think or we assume that there is um, bias on job platforms. So specifically in the search algorithms of job platforms. So they suspected that when someone has an account on a job platform and they're female, for instance, and they type in um, teacher or female teacher or lerares, as it is in Dutch, they will find um, less well-paid and less jobs than if a male uh, searches on that same job platform. So they asked us to research this, basically. So this was one of the outcomes uh, of that research, a report for uh, the Netherlands Institute of Human Rights and uh, a couple of conversations actually with these job platforms and the data scientists that created these algorithms uh, in which we uh, helped them basically to change their algorithms to make it less biased. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, how, how does it work? So they, uh, if I understand you correctly, they come to you. So they have a special yeah. request and then they go yeah. to the Utrecht Data School. So it's yes. not like a, a, a research goal that you have and then you need to find partners or they, they come to you. So what, what has been uh, really helpful is we have been building our net network and our position as expert on the field of datafication and impact for the last 10 years. So we like out, yeah, we publish in uh, um, papers they read or platforms they read, like eBestuur, Binlands Bestuur. We present on professional conferences like Overheid 360. Um, and we've been really building on this, you know, um, image of us as experts within a certain field. And that's why. Now we don't have to spend as much time drinking coffee. <laughs> that was how we started out. Like the first three the years, coffee we stage is over. drank a lot of coffee. But now we don't have to anymore because we've established our name in the this niche field, and organizations know how to reach us now. So that's yeah, a very nice like second phase of public engagement for us. Yeah. So you have very warm ties with your partners, and how how, how do yeah. you keep it warm? Um, so I think expectation management is a very important concept. Um, really bring across that our research interests come first always hmm. uh, and communicate what those research interests specifically are um, and establish overlap between their interests and our interest and really clearly mark the area that overlaps and say, okay, this is the area we can collaborate in. Yeah. So when that's very clear, I think, yeah, they know what they can expect of you. We know what we can expect of them. And yeah, that, yeah. That, that's a way to, to keep these uh, these ties warm. Yeah. Um, w we're also talking about impact uh, uh, in this this part. So how do you make sure you have like the maximum impact? So um, for us, it's really about defining our target audience. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I've heard also from uh, from um, the people that spoke before that they you had already also defined your tar target audience, like students and teachers. I think that's that's a very smart thing to do. Um, and then keep in mind, you know, what kind of impact do we want to create and which audience is most suitable for helping us in creating that impact. So for instance, when we work with municipalities, we make sure we reach um, like kind of like the middle management or the people that are really hands-on involved with technology and also mm -hmm. have the mandate to make certain decisions to change their policies, for instance. Yeah. And those those are the people we choose to work with. Yeah. So there's there's not like a, a special matrix you have to sort of measure impact. Um, not really. Of course, we keep track of all of our media appearances. Yes. Um, which have been increasing in the past couple of years. Um, so that's one way we kind of keep tab of our impact. Mm. Um, but we don't have a, a very defined methodology 
Yes. Yeah, I can imagine yeah. being data yeah. scientists. I mean, you can easily sort of scan the internet and see where people mention you. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, let's, let's talk a bit more about uh, measuring impact. Uh, that's what you do, um, Madeleine. Uh, you founded the Impact Lab um, that specifically measures the impact of science communication. Uh, yeah, this, this was another from you from the Utrecht Data School. Uh, you also have uh, uh, someone who, uh, who works at the the Groene Amsterdammer, right? Or works works with them. Uh, he doesn't work at the Groene yeah. Amsterdammer, but we have a very intense intensive cooperation with the Groene Amsterdammer. So now we have one of our researchers um, who has uh, two days a week to work uh, on research, joint research with uh, the Groene Amsterdammer. So these are a couple of examples of. Um, articles uh, that came out based on our research, yeah, and and one of them is um, oh, it's not even on here. It was about sexism um, online towards female politicians, which has been nominated for a journalistic prize. Mm. So that was a very big accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah, great. All right, now we really go to you, Valen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, tell us something about. How this started, this idea of measuring impact. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, actually, this uh, started uh, with a sort of a, a love announcement to the public <laughs> engagement team. Oh, that's <laughs> what we like to hear. <laughs> In we the context of this uh, of this uh, conference or this symposium. It's really relevant because uh, actually Miranda is, is here, but I was uh, in the <laughs> beginning. Uh, I was just so in love with all the public engagement activities that the, Utrecht, um, uh, the University of Utrecht was, was doing. And uh, I just went up to, uh, to that team and, sa and saying, yeah, I, uh, I, want, I love this, can I help? That, I think that's where it all started. Uh, and then, well, I don't know what they thought of it at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I also told them, you know, I'm a social scientist. I, uh, I, measure human behavior mm -hmm. and perhaps it's a good idea if we start measuring the impact of public engagement yeah and then we started collaborating in 2019 at the Bedwetter festival that was the first study where we walked around with uh, little ipads and the goal of that research was to find out what are the working ingredients here of mm -hmm. Uh, of these uh, public engagement activities that people are doing here because you have different experiments and lectures and all these things that people do, and some have impact and some have less impact, but what determines uh, whether it has impact? But also, what is impact? And right? what is impact, yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, well, that's what, what we started with. Yeah. And um, after we did this project, uh, the NWA came up to me and said, okay, we want to develop uh, a toolbox for measuring impact, and we want to help all uh, well, science communicators in the Netherlands to, to measure impact. And then we started the Impact Lab and started helping people uh, in the Netherlands. Yeah, maybe we, we can go to the, to the previous slide, because what, what aspects do you look at? Yeah, so <coughs> I think it's important then to, to distinguish the Impact Lab, which yes. is really about helping people. It's like a help desk. Yeah, so that's that's not the, the research that that's you do. That's not the research, no. no. This, uh, this is uh, the help desk, you could say. Yeah. Um, we th These are 10 uh, ways to measure impact. So these are, you could, uh, for example, uh, do a questionnaire. You can uh, use a game. You can use a post-it uh, um, way to to um, sort of collect people's reactions to an event. You can do a diary. You can have people write diaries uh, after visiting your event. All these different types of ways are, they are just tools, ways, uh, well, they came from the social sciences mostly, to measure uh, whether you uh, changed people's knowledge, attitudes, or behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, w was there already some, I don't know, papers on this particular theme, or did you just start with nothing? Um, when it comes to measuring the impact of, of Well, these are all 
tools that people uh, who do research on human behavior they all know them like uh, the yeah. questionnaire uh, the you know the survey is something that most people know uh, yeah. know about but you there are different ways um, and more creative ways and sometimes they are more useful uh, because people do not always want to fill out a long questionnaire but they might be interested in making a, a, a selfie with themselves uh, in, in some kind of context and if you uh, draw useful data from that that can be a fun way to do uh, an impact measurement. Yeah. yeah. And uh, wha what has been the response from the scientific community? Oh, well, very enthusiastic. All right, good. <laughs> uh, so we uh, we give workshops uh, together with the KNW. Um, Sandra was also part uh, of that, and then we started collaborating. Uh, we um, we we work with uh, NWO projects who got funding, uh, you know, who do science communication projects and who also need, as part of their um, their research and their projects, they need to do a measurement. So then they come to us to to collaborate on the measurement. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with people in uh, in the university to uh, help them measure their impact. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, I think uh, for us it's really hard to keep the research going because the help exactly, desk uh, is uh, yeah. is sort of exploding. Yeah. yeah, so you you can't use the data that all these different uh, people who use uh, the tool. They, they're, there's not like a database that 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 you can use in doing research. Well, the thing is, if you want to. Uh, do research, you need to be able to compare projects. Mm. Um, uh, so you need to see, okay, uh, how does the impact of this project compare to the impact of that project? And if you want to compare, you need them to use the same measurements. Mm. And the problem is that every project wants their own measurement because they have their own uh, goals and they have their own target audience and they have their own context. So everybody uses a different measurement, and that makes it really hard to do research with these data. Yeah. And if we want to do research, we ask, and that's also what we try to do, ask people to use the same questionnaire all the time. And you can, it's actually the same questions, I should say, because it, these same questions, they can be asked, for example, using a WooClap or a Mentimeter or an interview or uh, a game or or a questionnaire, it can be anything, but it has to be those same questions that everybody asks so we can compare. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult because it feels like a burden. You know, you want to, uh, you have to ask th that sort of generalized questionnaire, whereas you might want to do something mu much more specialized that is sort of focused on your own project. Yeah, so if I understand you correctly, a lot of time goes into this toolbox, uh, and this means you don't have enough time to do the research. Yeah, well, it's hard. I mean, I, I, it was uh, mentioned in, in the previous discussion as well. How do you keep focused? Because once you start something and you start sort of offering your services, yeah. and um, actually, uh, and it's of course great that people are so happy that right. we do it. Yeah, but uh, but then um, you, you need to think about, okay, uh, so it's taking up a lot of time, and now how am I going to do my research? Um, and that's, I think that th that's the process that we are in now, and I, I'm, I'm not complaining because I just think it's, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. Yeah. But I'm an academic, and I want uh, to stay an academic, so the question is, I guess it also relates to uh, then recognition and rewards. Is this, Am I doing the right thing, or am I sort of carry carried away now in my in my help desk? Uh, yeah, that, that 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 would be my 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 next question. Let's let let's talk about recognition and and rewards. Do you feel recognized for for the work you've done? Yeah, yeah. In in uh, I feel recognized. Yeah, in the sense yeah. that uh, people, I feel that people. Um, well, uh, respect me for what I do, and mm -hmm. I, uh, I have a lot of uh, interesting uh, collaborations, and this this network of public engagement people at the at the university is just great. It's very rewarding. Um, but I also, yeah, I I'm not sure about how to explain all this, for example, to uh, my supervisor when I um, when my functioning as an academic is being assessed. It's like, how am I going to explain what I am doing? Uh, it, it doesn't sort of t 
tick the t the, the typical boxes that you uh, that you s that we are all used to and that we are so used to, you know, strive for. And now you do something different, and you know it's. It's helpful, you know. Yeah. It's useful, and I do feel like an academic when I do it. It's it's not non-academic work, but it. I think we are all in the development of trying to come up with ways to to sort of acknowledge what people are doing when they are helping people in this way. Do you, do you recognize this? Yeah, I recognize it. Um, yeah, a lot because. Um, um, you know, you d you do all of these things, and then in the end, the only question is, okay, but how many papers have you, how many things have you published? Um, so um, I think it's a very good development that now in the strategic plan, which was also mentioned in the beginning, there's more space for these types of activities as well. Um, I also really. Um, um, like the fact that there's more room for team science because I feel like within these mm. types of activities it's not just one PI that's doing all of the research, it's really a team effort. Um, and I feel like that should get a yeah more recognition and reward as well. So I think it's a good development that the strategic plan is now more focused on those elements. Yeah, so hopefully it will change soon, but uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a, a good time to open up the discussion. I can imagine that there are questions about and remarks about recognition and, and re rewards. Yes, Sana, um, can you share the mic? That'd be great. Yeah, oh, sure, I can touch it. Mm. I touched it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine um, if you touch uh, it, but I yeah, hold it. Yeah, yeah, I, I will yeah, hold no, it. No, you're right, you're right. Yes. So, um, for Madeleine, we need you to do research. Because when I was preparing my application for our, uh, for our game, I was looking for research about the, um, the idea of humanities scientists or scholars with high school children. There is none. It's only draw a scientist, and then they draw a person in a white coat with, a, with an Erlenmeyer in their hand. So next to the fact that you were a very, very, very valuable um, help desk, which I profited uh, uh, great, uh, great from, I think it's also important to get that research on, on the same level. And sorry, this is my stick pony again. But um, on the same level as the as the betas are doing, so we need people looking at how do they think about humanities in combination with data and and stuff like that. So get 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 on the job. Get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I, uh, well, I'm I'm happy to hear, and I agree. Uh, yeah, we need to do more research. Uh, I think we're all uh, asking the same questions here, like how does it work, and when uh, what. What buttons do we need to press to 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 create impact? Uh, that's a, a curiosity-driven question that we all would like to answer. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm I can't wait. Yeah. Any other questions or remarks? Yes, I'm sorry, Lauren. That's fine. Um, I won't touch or hold. Um, <laughs> but we're here to speed date, and I have to say that I'm very attracted by both speakers. So I have a question and a proposition. Um, and it kind of ties in a couple of discussions, because Sana talked a lot about prototyping, and my new research project is on, on prototype warfare, about the integration of algorithms and big data in warfare. So my question to Edis is, would you like to collaborate on this particular project? Because my technical skills are like, uh, my uh, you know, knowledge of technologies is very minimal. And then the question um, that really matters here, if, if is this collaboration for these types of requests? Do you ask um, to be paid for your expertise? And how does that work? Or is it just because it's a win-win that you get access to data that you wouldn't? have otherwise, so that's one question. And Madeleine, I've got a launch on the 20, 12th of April, <laughs> 13th of April. Um, yeah, so what, ha, in what way can I make that beneficial for your research? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, you know, doing research, um, at least in my field, uh, it involves collecting data. Uh, that means you need people on the floor to collect data, who walk around with uh, iPads and all these, or questionnaires, or who do interviews. And um, 
So what would make it helpful uh, for me is if you had those people and I could instruct them what to ask. That's wonderful. Okay, so um, first of all, sure, collaboration, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's always a good thing. Uh, I'm all for collaboration, so yeah. Uh, and secondly, um, almost all of the work we do with external partners, we ask for compensation. So we use the model provided by our faculty in um, calculating the, the fee. Um, and uh, but I must say, we uh, like funding isn't our first motivation. It's not our driver. Our driver is really that we collect our research interests in the field by collaborating with these external partners, and in that sense, gaining access to data we wouldn't otherwise be seeing or or getting. Uh, so that's really our first motivation. Um, and as a sort of byproduct, we uh, also notice that we are treated differently when an external partner is obliged to pay because they they have to collaborate as well. They have to provide us with knowledge, with insight into their practices, and they take us more seriously as experts when they're in this sort of project together in which they also have something to lose, basically. So uh, yeah, we we find that it's a it's a good a good thing, yeah yeah. Also in terms of effort, the external partner makes yeah. Any remarks? A question? Yeah, sure. Just a quick follow up on that because I've heard your colleague Mirko Schaefer talk about what he calls entrepreneurial research, right? Which is I think a very interesting space for us to to be exploring where. It's it's part you you want to say up front we're not charging the full rate that would be charged by you know a data consultant or someone coming in, but that means in exchange we also want to be able to steer the project in a direction that makes it fruitful for our research. So I I, I think this is my hobby horse. I'm just sort of repeating this point about it does need to be kept in mind how we can integrate these forms of public engagement back into the process of strengthening our own research. So I don't know if you can say anything more about that model. Yeah, so entrepreneurial research is indeed our method, uh, which also entails sometimes pre-financing our hours. Like I've heard a lot of you talk about the process that goes before actually signing a contract, this iterative process where you spend hours and hours with the partner coming up with, you know, what are the research questions that serve both our interests uh, and that has to come out of our own reserves. Um, uh, therefore, it's it's extremely important to um, uh, have this type of financial model which allows you to do these activities also in the future with different prospective partners. Yeah, so, um, uh, and, and you know, the, the third revenue stream is becoming increasingly more important for universities. So this is something that could definitely, yeah, um, be valuable for that. 